200s boost is a nice entry into overclocking. It's kind of like XMP in that you just enable a single profile in the BIOS. Full manual overclocking may seem very daunting to some people, but 200s boost is very easy to use and can be done in seconds. On my ASRock Z890 Pro RS BIOS, I only have to do these steps in order to enable 200s boost. Enable 200s boost in the menu. Save the BIOS setting. That's all you need to do. But there are other options as well. You can also choose to use 200s boost with or without using the XMP profile. Or you still have the option for full manual tuning, the route I ended up going. The main thing that 200s boost does is increase the fabric tile, the NGU, up to 3.2 gigahertz from 2.6 gigahertz, a 600 megahertz increase. It also increases the die to die tile from 2.1 gigahertz up to 3.2 gigahertz, a 1.1 gigahertz increase and takes DRAM frequencies from DDR5 6400 up to DDR5 8000, an improvement of 1600. And 200S boost specifies the system agent voltage at up to 1.2 volts and the DRAM voltage at up to 1.4 volts. ASRock Z890 Pro RS BIOS Gaming OC Presets The ASRock BIOS also contains a couple of gaming OC presets. These were also available in a prior BIOS. Gaming OC preset Stage 1 and Stage 2 both increase the core clocks to the same level, adding 100MHz to the 2 core boost and 200MHz to all the P cores. In addition to that, Stage 2 sets the DTD and NGU to 3.4 GHz. Be careful when selecting Gaming OC Preset Stage 2 though, as it also increases various voltages. Stage 1 and Stage 2 increases the voltages on 2 P cores that boost the highest by 100 mV, which might be okay for a higher end cooler, but since I am using a Hyper 212 Black Edition, I am trying to keep core voltages as low as possible. In addition, Stage 2 also increases the system agent voltage all the way up to 1.4 volts. That is way over the Intel warranty limit for system agent exceeding the 1.2 volts of 200S boost by 200 millivolts. I do not recommend using either of these presets since they mess with the voltages and the higher voltage settings seem to come back if you load this setting from a profile even if you save it after editing in a lower voltage. RAM When overclocking Arrow Lake, I recommend using good quality RAM. If you want an easy solution, you can stick to 200S Boost Certified RAM, which is rated all the way up to DDR5-8000. Intel has a list of RAM kits that can easily be used with 200S Boost. You can also get good results for standard DIMMs. If you do your research and purchase a standard kit of RAM, that has good overclocking characteristics as I have. If you want to stick to the 200S boost voltage spec, use a DRAM voltage of up to 1.4 volts. The RAM kit I am using is rated for DDR5 6400C32 at 1.4 volts. It uses Hynix MDI, which is known to be very good when it comes to memory overclocking. The 2x24 MDI kit that I have was able to go all the way up to DDR5 8200C40 on its XMP DRAM voltage of 1.4 volts after doing a bit of RAM tuning. Perhaps I could take it even further with a bit more voltage, but at the moment I am very happy with the value of DDR5 8200C40 that I was able to reach a few months ago. Improving the RAM speed and tightening the RAM timings greatly increases the read, write, and copy bandwidths and latency numbers of the RAM. Compare my DDR5 8200C40 numbers against the CPU running its DDR5 6400C32 XMP profile. The difference is huge. Read, write, and copy bandwidths have improved a great deal. And the latency is greatly improved, going from over 80 nanoseconds to around 70 nanoseconds. A massive improvement in latency. 
DTD and NGU clocks. In BIOS 3.04, which was the first BIOS with 200S boost support, the highest value you can manually set for the DTD and NGU clock is up to a 32 multiplier for 3.2 GHz. This seems to be a bug that only affects that version of the BIOS, as the prior BIOS 2.25 and the current BIOS 3.07 beta allow you to set both the NGU and D to D to a value of up to 40 for up to 4 GHz. If you are on BIOS 3.04 and want to set the NGU or D to D to higher than 3.2 GHz, I'd suggest updating to the latest BIOS. 200S boost improves the DTD up to a whopping 52%, taking it from 2.1 GHz all the way up to 3.2 GHz, and the NGU clock is improved by up to 23%, going from 2.6 GHz to 3.2 GHz. These are pretty big clock increases, and PC Games Hardware, Der Bauer, and others have found that improving these clocks do help in delivering higher gaming performance. In order to increase the DTD and NGU clocks, you may need to increase your system agent voltage. Intel recommends using 1.2 volts for the system agent for your system to still be under warranty. I was able to reach 3.2 GHz on both the DTD and NGU while using a fixed 1.2 volt system agent voltage. My overclock. Since I have a lot of experience manual tuning, I will continue to go down that route. 200 as boost maximum values actually beats the DTD and NGU clocks of my last overclocking profile. So I have them in a bit further testing so that my own overclock can at least match 200 as boost in all areas. I exceeded the 200 as boost NGU and DTD clock, setting both of them to 3.4 gigahertz. 200 megahertz higher than 200 as boost. Since 200S boost doesn't improve CPU clocks, my clock speeds are slightly higher. I have my e cores at 4.7 GHz, 100 MHz higher than 200S boost. The ring is at 4 GHz, 200 MHz above 200S boost, and my RAM is at DDR5-8200, 200 higher than the DDR5-8000 of 200S boost. I am also running my CPU at reduced voltages since I am only using a Hyper 212 Black Edition air cooler for this CPU. So I am able to get much better performance than stock while using low enough power to be cooled by this CPU cooler. Even when running Cinebench 2024 for over 30 minutes, my CPU does not overheat with this cooler. And even after the 30 minutes when the CPU has heated up, my numbers still exceed those of many reviews of the Core Ultra 7 265K since my machine is overclocked. It is very impressive that a small air cooler can achieve these results. But to get these increases required a lot of RAM tuning, which I already did months ago, taking my DDR5 6400 up to DDR5 8200 on a standard DIMM. And it took a lot of CPU tuning and stability testing. There is also some factor of luck and silicon quality. My 265K seems to hit 5.2 GHz with a minus 60 millivolt offset, which allows it to be cooled by the Hyper 212 Black Edition without throttling in the tests like Cinebench 2024. If it wasn't for these reduced voltages, I would probably be throttling in that test. My current overclock only beats 200S boost by a little. So I'd say the 200S boost feature is good for people who don't want to spend much time tuning. It could be very useful for reviewers for instance, but it would be cool if some reviewers took some time to tune the system a little further just to see how much extra performance they could get with manual tuning. PC Games Hardware for instance has an excellent article where they found that after additional tuning, the Aero Lake CPUs can be among the fastest gaming CPUs on the market today. But with 200S boost alone, Aero Lake is in a better position in gaming than it was at launch. Derbauer, for instance, found a 12% improvement on average, with some games seeing some very solid improvements. However, if you do the additional tuning, PC Games Hardware found that when the 265K is completely tuned, 
it can be on par with CPUs like the 9800X3D and 9950X3D. After improving my overclocking profile, my current overclock is even more similar to the values shown in the PC Games Hardware article. In the end, 200S Boost is a great feature that allows you to get a nice boost in clocks on both the DTD and NGU without having to do manual tuning. The DTD gets a massive 1.1 GHz improvement and the NGU improves by 600 MHz. When combined with fast DDR5 modules, 200S Boost seems to provide around a 12% improvement in gaming performance according to Devour. If you want an easy solution, there are 200S Boost certified RAM kits, but I went the manual tuning route on my previously purchased DDR5 standard DIMMs. I was able to take a DDR5 6400C32 kit all the way up to DDR5 8200C40 after doing a bit of manual tuning. The 12% or so increase in gaming performance you can get with 200S Boost alone is a very solid improvement. That's like a generational improvement in CPU gaming performance these days. But you can still improve things a lot further with manual overclocking. A PC Games hardware article showed an increase of nearly 30% on average after full manual tuning. Looking at their article, it appears most of the additional performance gains are coming from tuning the RAM. In the article, they were using DDR5-8400 with Titan timings. I was able to get my DDR5-6400C32 kit all the way up to DDR5-8200. So my system with a manual overclock is not far behind of what PC Games Hardware showed. In the article where an overclocked Core Ultra 265K was rivaling CPUs like the 9800X3D. The latest BIOS 3.07 beta also fixes a bug that was in BIOS 3.04. In BIOS 3.04, you could only set the NGU and DTD to a multiplier of 32 even though that BIOS had text saying that it could go up to 40. In the latest BIOS 3.07, there is no limitation and you can set NGU and DTD up to a 40 multiplier. It's nice that this was fixed as I currently have my DTD and NGU set at 3.4 GHz in my personal overclock. Thanks for watching.